Why Female Suicide Bombers Are Terrorists' New Weapon In a shocking series of coordinated attacks in northern Nigeria, female suicide bombers targeted a wedding, a hospital, and a funeral, killing over 30 people and injuring many more. The attacks, which occurred in uh, Goza, Borno State, on June 30th, 2024, have reignited concerns about the security situation in a region long plagued by terrorist activities, particularly those of Boko Haram. While no group immediately claimed responsibility, the tactics mirror those previously employed by Boko Haram, known for its extensive use of female suicide bombers. Mia Bloom, an expert on female suicide bombers, explained the strategic re reasoning behind this tactic. The, women's ar the women arouse less suspicion, and they are able to penetrate the, penetrate the targets more deeply. This tragic event highlights the complex issues surrounding terrorism in the region, including the exploitation of vulnerable individuals and the ongoing challenge of maintaining security in areas with a history of insurgency. President Bola Tinubu condemned the attacks as desperate acts of terror, underscoring the government's struggle to combat its, this persistent threat. So, yeah, D is our lovely editor D is providing a little bit more uh, insight into the attack. And so I want to I want to provide some more details. And it actually is really freaking horrible what happened in Nigeria. And we would like to pay attention to Nigeria on this channel. So basically, this was a series of coordinated attacks over a uh, period of time. And what happened was that there was a female suicide bomber. She went into a wedding with a baby like strapped to her and then detonated a similar situation happened at a hospital and these, these attacks happened in quick succession and then the third attack this is what really got me was there was a large funeral that was being held for the victims of the first two attacks they then go to this funeral and detonate another female suicide bomber at the funeral for the victims of the first attacks it's it's horrible and so people are wondering what this spells for that region um because we haven't quite had an attack like this for some time but then it also led me down a little bit of a wormhole looking at the use of women in these kinds of attacks because basically this is unusual there are not as many groups that will utilize women in operatives in this way and this but Boko Haram has a history of doing this and partially it has to do with their history of you know like the the kidnapping of the Chiboat girls so the attacks where this happened was somewhat close to the same area you know the, the very famous bring back our girls campaign that happened in 2014 i would like to remind people that there are a hundred of those girls that are still in captivity that were never recovered 10 years later for the bring back our girls campaign um so this happened relatively close to that area. And the problem is, is that there, this use is, it, it's very complicated. Partially it's because, like I said, they tend to blend in. They arouse less suspicion. They're less likely to be perceived as threats. So they're, it's easier for them to penetrate a target more deeply and then wreak more havoc claim more victims essentially um secondly there's an element of most a lot of these women are likely victims of this group that have been extremely traumatized and assaulted in a multitude of ways and some of them make the calculation that they essentially are better off as a bomber at these kind of operatives than being forced to marry a Boko Haram fighter which is very, very dark. Um, and um, research by the Combating Terrorism Center at West Point found that the group Boko Haram deployed women in, as bombers in over half of its operations, including suicide missions from April 2011 to June of 2017. Many of the bombers were girls. 
And um, they often send girls on these missions completely against their own will. It's really, really horrible. Um, so Armin, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. I mean, it's just the Nigeria is such a, one of the countries that I mention often as what a, a country with such a huge potential for growth, not just for itself, but also a country that could carry the rest of Africa being held back so much by religion, so much by religion. I mean, not that it will not grow, but the cost of religion to Nigeria is so astronomical to its economy, to its stability, to its growth. And a country that is so thirsty for opportunities and has so, so many things other than its other than the religion religious division within the country, it has so many other things completely going in line with what it needs to take advantage of the next uh, couple of decades. And a lot of that is being lost because of this political because of this religious division. The the legal structure, the religious legal structure the violence, the tribalism, the the customs, so much. I mean, if people people are saying like, oh, religion is just a secondary issue, it doesn't matter, like are there more important things that are costly to society, just show them Nigeria and show what it's not what religion is doing to Nigeria. It's one of the best and one of the best examples of why, you know, not African countries are being held back is because of religious beliefs. I don't know. What do you think? You think I'm exaggerating? No, I, I I think the way that the situation in the region has evolved over the past several years really, you know, give, gives credence to your your view of the matter. Um, the insecurity because of jihadist insurgency in the Sahel at large is wreaking havoc on the entire region, and. I don't know. It's not a tactical struggle that I follow very closely, but based on what I absorb, it seems like it's very, very difficult for the authorities to get a foothold um, in in creating a more stable in, 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 in society and providing stability and we cover extensively how this really drastically impacts nigerian christians to the point that a lot of people would probably be really surprised to learn that one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a christian is in nigeria um mm -hmm. the level of violence and the massacres that occur against nigerian christians are insanely shocking and they happen with frequency increased frequency um as we talked about when there was that horrific attack on on christmas last year um and you know arjun gave a super chat saying does armin change his mind on this particular case that borders must be changed for my nigeria with one christian and one muslim nation look I don't think we have a history of partitioning countries on the basis of ethnic, ethnic and religious identities going particularly well. Did I have this position ever? I don't remember having this position. No, no, no. I, I think been... I think Arjun is saying like you take a very strong stance against changing borders oh. anymore, right. and I think he's saying, "Oh, do you would you change to say that you think you should we should change borders in this case?" look, I'm no expert. I'm going to immediately say no. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the only rare cases where I would be in favor of changing borders is when the people of that country come together and have an understanding and they all willingly give in, you know, agree. And not just the members, not just the people that are living in that per in that area that wants to secede. Like, the entire country comes together with an understanding that this would be better for everyone. And those are the only situations. I mean, there are some other situations when, I don't know, there's an act of genocide or something like that. Rare cases, very rare cases, right? Usually that's not the, usually that's not the solution. Usually that makes things a lot worse. However, that being said, Nigeria is 
suffering a lot because it's half Christian, half Muslim. So there are many Islamic African countries that suffer because they're Islamic, but Nigeria suffers extra hard for being half of each. Like the division is a lot stronger because the population is mixed. So yeah, just makes the religious violence a lot worse and more frequent. That's not a, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not saying the solution is to cut it into a half. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a reflection of the broader insurgency problems. Although there are, there are some really bad blasphemy lynchings that happen too. Yes. Yeah. So Um, when you say, when you say must be changed, it's well, like, what do you mean? Like, how could we cannot decide these things from the top for the people? If there is not already a natural, already existing desire for such a thing within a within a country, then doing something to a country against a natural, already existing desire with a political with, with a lot of political force behind it, that will break the break such the things even more it makes things worse you know than than they already are because you're you're putting something on people you're forcing something on the people of of an area that they didn't even wish for themselves um we also got a super chat by sid dave sid is saying joe biden dropped out of the race did you see yes we yes literally just were like holy cow um Obviously, we, we're not going to, we can't dive into that now. I mean, there's a lot to digest. <laughs> and yes. we're in the middle of a show. We can't go do our work on <laughs> determining what the hell just happened while we're in the middle of a show talking about something else. Um, Can I just say, the, you know, if if they, if the Democrats had picked, Mich- they have convinced, I mean, they already picked Michelle Obama. To run against Trump, it would have been over. Like it would have been so easily over for the Republicans. That should have been their candidate, Michelle Obama. Really? Yep, that's what the polls show. I'm not saying if it's right. Yeah, but she's but again, not a politician. Cannot... Yeah, that's why she she said no. But here's the thing, Kamala. They cannot. It must. It is. It. I don't think they have any choice but to go with Kamala. Because all the money that they donated to uh, Biden and Kamala would be lost if they don't go with her. Like, there's a lot of money that is already in the donation war chest that the, that they have. If they go, if they want to go with somebody new, they, they would lose all of that. It's a nightmare. Oh my god! Mm. Like this is the first because... thing this has happened in the history of the United States. By the way, this is history being made in front of us. Anyways, we should move on. Though. Like, especially in the uh, Kamala historically has been polling so poorly because she's not exactly charismatic. Um, I mean, she might she might win. I know a lot of people think that I'm delusional, right? But a lot of people, a lot of votes are going to be anti-Trump votes. So a lot of people are like, why would people vote for Biden? They do, they're not voting for Biden. They're voting against tr- Trump. And the problem with Biden is that he is so bad these days that a lot of people might think, a lot of even anti-Trump people might think like, well, he's like, he's not even alive. So um, maybe it's even, I don't know which one is worse, right? So Kamala just has to be not Trump and she might be able to, and not the fact that she's not a corpse and also <laughs> not Trump might be enough for a lot of people. Right? But that's infuriating because that is not a positive program that you're pushing forward for the nation. I know, I'm not saying it drives me crazy as an American. I'm just saying don't be 100% certain now that Trump is going to win. Okay, The fact that you now have an alternative for a lot of people that is neither Trump or a corpse, that might be appealing enough for people to go vote against Trump. And Trump is still... It is still possible for Trump to lose because a lot of people think like after the assassination attempt, it's over. Trump is going to win. I'm like, it's likely, it's very likely, but it's not as certain as a lot of people make it seem like it is. 
by the way, we currently have close to 600 people watching us on Twitter right now. Y'all should come join us on YouTube. It's a lot more fun. We produce a lot more content over there and you can yes. join us in the live chat and make sure to subscribe and uh, like our, our stuff on YouTube because we're growing really, really fast over there. Um, and I would love to be engaging with the people who are on Twitter more. <laughs> Yes, because in the if you come on U Atheist Republic on YouTube, you will get to be part of the live chat here with the rest of the people in there, here in the live chat. So come hop over to YouTube and watch us on YouTube. Subscribe to Atheist Republic on YouTube. Um, Sid gave us a super <laughs> Dark, chat. Dark oh. is, wait, 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 wait. Dark is, I wouldn't trust those X num <laughs> numbers. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's also fair. You don't know. First yeah. of all, how dare you? Why are you taking this yeah. from me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sid gave a super chat saying, I support a Christian Nigerian nation, even though it is not a good idea of a country on the basis of religion. The West should have created a nation for Coptic Middle Eastern Christians when colonization was ending. I mean, the West was looking at its own interests. Why would, yeah. uh, and that would be the only natural thing to do. Like, why, why would you think that you wouldn't be doing the same thing? If you were at that time, and you're given the situation and you're trying to figure out what to do, you wouldn't be like, I wonder what would happen, I don't know, multiple decades from now. Let's plan according to that. You would probably be focusing on the immediate problems that you have right in front of you right now. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.